Hi, my name's Lucy and I'm 19. I live in England and this video is going to be about my coming out story. I guess all my life I had known that there was something not quite right but I could never really pinpoint exactly what that was for a very very long time anyway. I think I was about 15 or 16 um, and that's usually ish the age that you know all your friends start getting interested in boys etc and um, I think at that point it kind of struck me that I wasn't really interested. Um, I was definitely physically attracted to men um, but there was absolutely no emotional attachment whatsoever so I'd look at a man and be like he's hot but that was it. I think it was at that point that I <clears throat> realised that perhaps I was maybe conceivably possibly gay. Um, I put those words in mainly because I so did not want to be gay um, that I shut it off and I put it to the back of my head and I was like this is not something you should be thinking about. Between the ages of about 15 and 17 they were kind of painful years for me um, in terms of getting to know who I was, understanding myself um, and taking time out to really think about what I wanted. I just kind of shut out anything that was to do with sexuality and if that meant talking about boys with my friends and pretending that I was interested in them um, then so be it. I was in complete denial um, and even the word gay made me feel sick um, which is sad I guess. <sighs> This is really difficult. I never realised how difficult this would be. I've never been a very religious person. Um, I don't really lean towards religion. Um, but there were nights where I would just sit and pray that I was straight. Please God, make me straight. Don't let me be gay, please. And the day I remember the day uh, very, very clearly. I was 17. It was early June. I think, late May. I was on Twitter. <laughs> I follow Ellen DeGeneres on Twitter. Um, her show, as far as I know, doesn't air in the UK on TV. Um, well, I've never come across it, so I was subscribed to her YouTube channel, still am. She was my idol, I guess. Subconsciously, I warmed to her because she was gay, and I think it was a comfort to watch someone be so openly gay, yet be so happy and be so successful and she was just the epitome of amazing. Um, anyway, I followed her Twitter as well, because she's that cool. Um, and I remember she had tweeted um, an interview with herself and Shelley Wright, who was, who is um, an American country singer. Um, I never heard of Shelley Wright. Um, country music isn't really that big in the UK. So, um, but the thing that made me click on the link was she would called it Shelley Wright Comes Out. And I was like, ooh, what's this? <laughs> um, and I checked behind me to make sure my parents were in the room because God forbid they would walk in on me watching a video about someone coming out. In my head I thought, if they see me watching a coming out video, they will think I'm gay. Because um, I was a very logical 17 year old. Anyway, I clicked on the link. Over the course of the video, Shelley Wright spoke about her sexuality and how terrified she was about coming out and she she spoke about how she was suicidal and by the end of the video I was in floods of tears obviously and I remember very specifically Shelley Wright saying there is a girl or boy out there age 17 who could be watching this video and I want them to know that they're not alone and it was after watching that interview, that very second that that interview finished, I took a deep breath and I thought, I am gay. And that was a really big deal for me. It was this 10 minute video and it changed my whole outlook on my life, which is 
pretty incredible, so thank you, Ellen, and thank you, Shelley, for that. A few weeks later, I met Kaylin, and my whole life was just suddenly amazing. I had finally accepted who I was, and what's more, I had found someone else who accepted me for who I was, and that was just the best combination of things ever. But I still hadn't come out, and I think that was the next hurdle for me. It was December of that year that I came out to my friends, December 2010. So me and Caden had been together for seven months, um, and it was New Year's Eve, and <laughs> I was with my closest friends, who I adore, and I was very drunk, um, I'd had several <laughs> vodka shots by that point, and I told my friends, I said I have a girlfriend. Um, and this was in the middle of my friend Ben's kitchen, and they were like, what? And most of them thought I was joking, and I was like, no guys, I have a girlfriend, she's called Kaylin. And I remember me and my best friends, Belle and Emily, we went on a walk, just as um, it was getting up to midnight. We live in the middle of nowhere, by the way. We live in a really, really rural area. So we were walking up the lane and there were like cows mooing and, and I was telling them all about Kaylin and how happy I was and they were saying how much they loved me and that they were proud of me. And the sky was really clear and I remember at midnight all these millions of fireworks going off and I was like, I did it. It is 2011 and I did it. That was the best feeling in the world because I was there um, it was the new year, I was with my best friends, they loved me for who I was, and that was it. It was completely unexpected and I was not planning to do it. Uh, me and Kaylin hadn't even discussed coming out to my friends yet. Um, so I told Kaylin and she was like, what? And 2011 was the year that I went to university. And I told myself that it would probably be best if I came out when I wasn't living at home just in case it backfired and my parents wanted to kick me out. Um, I know now that my parents would never do that um, and I'm very, very blessed to have such amazing parents, but in my head I was thinking about all the possibilities and that was one of them. So I moved away to university in September 2011 and Caden and I had both been talking about me coming out because obviously now Caden was out and her parents knew about me. The pressure was rising, I think, Kaden wasn't putting any pressure on me whatsoever, but I was putting pressure on myself. And I wanted to build our relationship and make it a stronger one, a healthier one, where neither of us would have to hide who we were with each other um, and our families and our friends. So me and Kaylin agreed a date. October 14th, 2011. We said, that is the day, Lucy, that you will come out. Um, and originally I was going to do it on a Skype conversation because obviously I don't live at home, I live about five hours away. So I was going to tell them on Skype, which was fair enough, um, but I chickened out. Um, my parents were busy that evening anyway, they were out somewhere, I remember. So I decided to send them an email. I think that was a good compromise, um, emailing them, because it wasn't going to be face-to-face -face confrontation, which has never really been my thing. I'm quite introverted and shy sometimes um, and it was such a big deal to me that I thought email was quite safe and I know to some people that would seem like a cop-out you know not doing it face to face but I felt comfortable with that and I think it's important beyond anything that it was me who made that decision not anybody else so I started drafting out an email um, a few weeks before the actual date just so I could you know mull it over and think about what I wanted to say and stuff um, and I actually went on Google and I I was just looking at other emails that other people had sent um, so I could kind of take inspiration I guess and look at how other people had dealt with the topic and how they'd said it and I was copying and pasting bits that I liked and kind of taking inspiration from that and writing my own coming out letter based on those things and it was really really helpful for me because it made me feel like I wasn't alone firstly because obviously hundreds of other people had done the same thing as me um, and it was just nice to see how other people had done what I was doing so that was really helpful for me um, anyway I finished my email and I sent the email on the evening of October 14th I've always been the type of person who reads back over emails obsessively to make sure I made no spelling mistakes and stuff so naturally I went back over the email to read it and it was all fine and I scrolled right down to the very bottom 
and then my heart stopped because um, like I said before I'd been copying and pasting bits of email that I liked um, to take inspiration from when writing my own <laughs> email and I had left a sentence that someone else had written in the actual email by mistake <laughs> and it said I hope you will always love me mom and dad it was American love from your son Ed needless to say I was <laughs> distraught and I was sobbing for most of the night because I thought it ruined my life. I was 100% sure that my parents were going to read the email and think that I was, you know, schizophrenic and that I wanted to be called Ed now and that I was going to change gender and Kanan was on Skype the whole time and she told me to calm down and she told me that it was going to be okay and rest assured the next morning I got an email from both my parents um, um, and it was the best email I have ever read. Um, they were absolutely wonderful and they were supportive and they said they loved me <sighs> and they didn't mention Ed. <laughs> My parents have always been very tactful and that was it. They knew, they knew who I was, they knew I was gay, they knew I had a girlfriend and they loved me. And I think that's really all I could ask of them and to this day I appreciate how lovely they have been about this whole thing and I can only hope that I can repay them by making them proud of me. Um, I want to show them how happy Kaylin makes me and how perfect she is and I guess I'm just really really lucky. So that's why um, if you hear Ed referenced anywhere, I know Ed was referenced in um, me and Kaylin's April 2012 video. If Ed is referenced, that is who uh, we are referring to. <laughs> I think what coming out has taught me more than anything is that even if it is the scariest thing you will ever have to do, the feeling of relief that I got was greater than any amount of pain and misery and anger and frustration that I had built up for myself over the years. Um, and it just washed that away completely um, and I was left with this amazing feeling of relief and I was content and I was happy, properly happy for the first time ever. I think it's important though to highlight that I was very lucky, I was very very fortunate to have um, the reaction from my family and friends that I did. Um, they could not have been more perfect and I understand that for some people that really isn't the case and that people are born into families where being gay is considered disgusting and it's considered a sin and I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that people in those situations it is going to be harder for you but I want you to know now that if you're watching this you are not alone there are millions of other people out there just like you I promise um, one of them being me um, and me and Kaden are here for you whenever you need us. Um, you can send us emails, you can ask us questions on Tumblr and we will help you as much as we can because although we've been very privileged in the way that we've had to deal with these things, we want to help you as much as we can. So please do not hesitate to talk to either of us. I guess all I can really hope for is that by you watching this video wherever you are in the world um, I want you to know that you're not alone and I promise you it gets better <laughs>